Well, thank you, Danny. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Eastern Energy Expo. I hope everybody this month is, uh, has been enjoying the show along with all the uh, webinars that have been provided in our industry. And for today's webinar, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeff Rosga, and I'm one of the technical trainers with RW Beckett Corporation. And this afternoon, I'm gonna spend the next 45 minutes or so, and would just like to talk to you about connective tank gauges and the future of fuel level monitoring. So kind of what I'm gonna to do to begin, we're gonna take a look at the past, the way we used to do things, which is still the present. There's a lot of people still doing what they're doing today. And we just thought that this type of a device can help change the way that we're, we're doing business. So we're gonna start by taking a look at the way we, we did things, the K factor and the degree days. Well, historically the oil industry has delivered the fuel oil to automatic customers by the degree day projections. Delivery volumes are projected by dividing the elapsed degree days by the building K factor. Okay, and that's where the math and the fun begins, right there. Okay, optimum delivery levels are established by the tank size. So for my example this afternoon, I'm gonna assume that we all have 275 gallon tanks and that the optimum drop is gonna be 200 gallons. So throughout the rest of my presentation, that's what I'm gonna take a look at as an example. So estimating the customer's K factor. You're the professional. You've seen many things in your career. You know, a lot of those things you just don't forget. Those are the things that always stick with us. You know, especially when you're doing uh, customer's K factor, you're doing maintenance to that customer's K factor. Your customers all own similar homes and maybe so do you. So their initial K factor could be guesstimated from just your best experience. And that's the key word right there, guesstimated. So sooner or later, you get closer. It just takes the time to do the math after the next delivery. And that right there, the key word, it just took time. So what we're gonna do here is just refresh our brains. So degree days are calculated by subtracting the average of the daily high and the low temperature from 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So our example, got a high temperature for the day at 40 degrees, low temperature at 25. We simply do the math, take 40 plus 25, 65, divide that by the two numbers, 37.5, round up to 38, subtract that from 65, and we end up with 27 degree days were accumulated for that day. So the next step is calculating the customer's K factor. The K factor is simply how many gallons are used by degree day. So we're gonna consider a home that uses 150 gallons over a period of 600 degree days. So we're gonna take the 600, divide that by 150 equals four. So the K factor for that home is four. You see how I made that nice and simple? Kind of indicating I'm not one that likes a whole lot of math here. So we deliver using the K factor. So let's consider this example. And once again, we're just refreshing our brains. So the home says we have a 275 gallon oil tank. That was our example. We said the optimum delivery is gonna be 200 gallons. The K factor is four. So we take the 
k factor of four times the 200, and we have 800. So we schedule, pull our tickets at deliveries at 800 degree days. Again, like I said, we're just refreshing our brains with all this. There's something else we have to remember. What about hot water usage? Oh yeah, can't forget that. Well, sounds like another column for the chart there. So we must adjust for hot water. Not all customers are heat only. We have heat and hot water customers. So we have to use our chart and we have to take a look and we must add those degree days. So for instance, if we have a daily high somewhere between 54 degrees and 57 degrees, we're gonna have to add four degree days. So we have to add that to the chart. So let's take a look at our chart, our spreadsheet that we fill out on a daily basis. We cannot forget to add for domestic hot water. We do have those customers. Once again, we can have heat only and we can have heat with hot water. So what do we do? We print your tickets for the accounts that are required on that delivery degree day. So let's just take a look at the spreadsheet and use a quick example. The daily high here is 55 degrees. The daily low is 42. Remember we do the math. So we take the 55 plus the 42 and that equals 97. We divide that by the two temperature readings, 48 and a half, we round up to 49, subtract that from 65, and we end up with 16 degree days. The previous degree day was 650. So we take the 16 plus the 650, you have 666. Well, this customer has hot water. We have to add the four. So the current degree day with hot water is 670. Once again, very simple, very quick. Do you look at that and we say, what could possibly go wrong with that system? You see that look, I've had that look myself because we all have days like this. So where do you want me to start? Well, entered the wrong information, very easily done. Customer has another heat source, ah, I want to stop on that for a minute. I want to talk about another heat source because I'm a perfect example of that. You know, maybe the customer's using a fireplace a little more than often, okay? Maybe they have a wood or a pellet stove. You know, maybe the customer recently had a mini split installed. This is happening. This happens everywhere. And like I said, I'm a perfect example of that. All right, I have had a wood burning stove in my house for over 20 some years. And it was out of commission for a while. And I was just using my, my primary heat. But with an increased bills, it's time to like, okay, it's time to get him fired back up again. So I'm looking at this winter as having a good supply of wood and I'm gonna help heat my home a little bit with wood this year. So that's something we just cannot forget and lose sight of. Customers using more hot water today. Look at the uh, next bullet point. Children home from school, more laundry and bathing. Another one I wanna to touch on for a second, children home from school. You know, like in some of my areas here in Ohio in our school districts, kids are gonna start going back to school this fall in September. Some of those school districts are running classrooms for three days a week and two days of homeschool. So children during this pandemic will be home more. You also gonna have your parents home more. You know, maybe one parent's working from home, maybe both are, they're working in separate areas. All this is gonna have to play a role in what we're doing. Maybe the faucet is leaking. We got that hot water customer. Someone's sick, what happens when you're sick and you get chilled? What do we do? We turn up the heat. Somebody opened a window, 
to enjoy the warmer weather. You look at all this, and the main thing we should do here is we have to stay customer focused. We're here for our customers. Say what you like. We must meet their needs. After all, customers are the ones that pay our bills. Again, no excuses. Stay customer focused. Customer focus means on time, as expected, as requested. That's the name of the game, to deliver their oil when it's needed. Remember to exceed their expectations, deliver on time and without fail. Again, no excuses. Your customer deserves to be confident that heating their home with your company is a seamless experience. When I look at those three bullet points, that really sums up great customer service. And that's what it's all about. So on time, as expected and requested. However, there are also things that we have to look out for. Don't trigger a complaint by delivering the fuel too soon because that will prompt a customer complaint. We've heard them all before. You filled my tank before I actually needed oil. I bet the price is going down. So you delivered when it was at the highest. Again, the customer complaints. Maybe delivered too late or not at all. And some of those reasons, unpredictable usage. Weather, maybe we couldn't get to certain locations, certain houses to deliver. Maybe the road was a sheet of ice. The truck couldn't make it down the hill or up the hill. Not gonna happen. You simply made a mistake. I was sure that the customer was a heat only account. So these are the things that happen. So when it comes to fuel delivery, the more efficient we become, the more profit we can take in. So how do we deliver? What a great question. First, we pull all the tickets for that degree day interval. We project the load value by the degree day. And we fill in customers with the driver thought might work out. That's where it gets a little tricky. That's where it can be a little more challenging because everybody has will call customers. So that right there, that third bullet point can really be a challenge at times. Hope the driver puts the route together in some order. That could be a bit of a challenge as well. We had call in customers to round out the route. Now that right there, when you take a look at that, appears like Pac-Man in demo mode, moving all over the place. How about you're already in route and you get a customer call in? That happens as well. Those are the things that we could help. So what is your projective goal for deliveries? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a look at, once again, some examples. So 30 stops, per driver for an eight hour day. Now that includes pre and post inspection, loading, miscellaneous, non-productive time and deliveries per driver. Non-productive time, it happens, it's uncontrollable, but we have to take that into consideration you know, the driver could be out filling the tank, customer comes outside, strikes up a conversation. Once again, it happens, it's uncontrollable. So 16 minutes, a lot of per drop. 
and dispatched at a 200 gallon delivery for a 275 gallon tank. Remember, that's the example that we said we were going to use. So if we got 30 stops in an eight hour day, 16 minutes allocated per drop and a 200 gallon dispatch optimum, three stops. Eight hour day, pre and post, non-productive time. And we have an average of 185 gallon average drop. Today we're gonna look at the number at 80 cents gross margin per gallon. So what we're gonna do is once again, the math 185 that's the average gallon drop times the 30 stops, and we have 5,550 gallons of fuel oil per driver per day. So we take those gallons times that gross margin of 80 cents, and we have a gross of 4,440 per driver per day. 30 stops the eight hour day, 185 average drop, somewhere today between 45 and 55 cents cost of delivery per gallon. So 185 gallon drop times our 30 stops per day, that was that 5,550 gallons per driver per day, so we take that times the mean, that was the average of this fuel cost between 45 and 55 cents. And we have 2,775. So we take the 4,440, we subtract 2,775, and we end up with a net of 1,600 65 revenue with overhead to deliver per driver per day. Again, folks, this is just an example. So what factors impact your productivity? How many stops are below your optimum? Could you utilize your assets better? How much time is spent on account review for K-factor maintenance? Something that has to be done. Customer service on delivery issues. Well, we all receive those types of calls. Calls for delivery because of changes in the weather. Maybe the customers at home watching the weather channel, notice a storm is moving in, all of a sudden it's late in the week, Thursday or Friday, they're freaking out that they may have a chance to run out of fuel. So you're getting the call. And the last one here, run out on automatic. Maybe that's something that happened because we were unable to get to them maybe on a Friday delivery. Maybe the the company here doesn't has a very strict no overtime policy. So maybe we'll have customers that may have to wait until Monday. And that can be the problem. Because that's where Monday may be too late. And later I'm going to show you a couple other examples and take a look at a couple different routes and we'll be able to come back and talk about that. But when we also talk about the factors that impact productivity, you know, the, there's more you can throw on this list, but like, you know, lost tickets, that happens. And we can't forget about that. So a couple points that we, we have to think about. And this bullet point right here, fuel delivery drives 70% of your cost. So think about this. 
let's say you're out pedaling 110 gallons of fuel oil. You know, roughly that's the same amount of time it would take you to deliver 200 gallons. So we have to think about those things. You got to remember those points. And some of those cost low productive delivery staff. It happens. If they're there. And that simply means maybe we have drivers that aren't motivated. You have drivers that are slacking off. They, you know, some of them just don't care. You know, some of them have that attitude. It's like, well, I'm not going to be doing this forever. I'm just doing this part time. Maybe it's something here where the driver just does not know the route well enough. Those things do happen. Spare trucks for seasonal spikes and maintenance. So during the low times, you got the spare truck sitting in the yard, excess inventory, that's never good, but you have to have them. Maintenance has to happen. Drivers trade their trucks in when they need maintenance or oil changes. So we have to always think about these points. Runouts on automatic. We just got done discussing some of that. And then the last that really hammers you here, the excess overtime. That excess overtime could be a result because of, could be weather. It could be the road conditions. You know, it could be longer than expected lines at the, at the terminal. You know, maybe you're used to being, you know, like fourth or fifth in line, first or second. But all of a sudden, wow, I got 20 some people in front of me. Something's going on. You know, there's breakdowns. There's, there's problems at the terminal itself. These are points that we always must take into consideration. So when we're thinking about these points, what we want to do is help shift that curve and flatten those deliveries, get a better handle on a few things. Be predictive of peak weeks. Manage the overtime. That right there, if we can get better grips on managing the overtime, then we can help shift the curve and flatten those deliveries. Now, maybe it's a case here where the overtime is needed and then we may tell our drivers, hey, we're working nine or 10 hours. Maybe we tell them they're, we're working on a Saturday. Well, if you can control, you know, get better, manage that overtime, that right there allows you to control your payables and create excess capacity. So that's one of the things that we have to take into consideration. Improve delivery efficiency. So what we're saying here is if we can put a route together, you know, that can do that, the better off and the more profit we are going to make. You know, remember you get those call in customers. Okay, you have customers that flip all over the place. So for instance, you have a route that kind of resembles a, a bit of a, a circle. And then all of a sudden you're off in another direction, heading towards like the tip of a star and then back down towards that circle area. Well, if we can deliver and be more effective there, that can improve our deliver efficiency. Return to the terminal with less on the delivery truck. So what about a driver that goes back to the terminal, say with 500 gallons on that truck? Well, the bottom line here is you don't make money carrying oil in the trunk. There is no doubt about it. So we want to try to shoot for less. We all heard the term EOL, end of load. That would be great to go back to the terminal with, with an empty truck. But 500 is just 
just way too much, not making money there. Remember, we want to deliver closer to optimum. And that's what can drive up profit per gallon. So we're going to take a look at a couple of examples here, as I said, that we're going to do. We're going to start off with, we've got a truck carrying 3,200 gallons. All right, and we have our route established and our first drop looks like we have 178 gallons. Remember what we said our optimum drop is, what we're shooting for. We talked about 185 being the average. Take a look at number 178, not too shabby, not too bad at all. The next drop, 206. And, okay. I'll give you that one. Next drop, 128. That's an oops. That's something's going on there. Don't like that 128. Why? Because that one right there is costing me money. The next drop, 163. Yeah, little iffy on that. Next drop. We unloaded 215. Again, there, that's a problem. Folks, that may be a problem with the K factor. That may be a problem that the customer's doing something. That may prompt a phone call. That will definitely get a note and make me want to follow up with that customer. That 215 right there, I'm not liking. The next drop, we're at 148. Hmm, kind of to me another oops. Why is the heat being turned down? That may also prompt a, another question, another call. The next drop, 195, got it. And the next drop here is 175. Not too shabby at all right there. So let's take a look. What did we end up doing? We delivered 1,499 gallons. All right, that was eight stops. Remember the allotted time was 16 minutes per drop. That's 128 minutes. So 14.99 divided by 128. And we end up with 11.7 gallons per minute. So what happens here? We have 1,700 gallons remaining. And our first drop, 185. Next drop, we're at 190. I'm smiling. Next drop, 164. Okay. 153. 121. Yeah, I'm grinning. 168. 187. 217. So the three concerns I have right here, 153, 121, and for sure, 217. So, how did we do? We delivered another 1385 gallons, eight times 16, 128 minutes, 10.8 gallons per minute leaves me with 316 gallons left in the truck it's time to go back to the rack so 3200 gallons 185 192 164 143 215 138 187 along with 207 so here i have a 143 and a 138 and i had a 215 once again that is a concern. So for these eight stops, we delivered 1431, eight times 16, 128 minutes, 1431 divided, 11.2 gallons per minute. So now we have 1,769 gallons remaining in the truck. Well, if this is a Friday and this is a, a customer, this is a 
they have a very strict no overtime policy well then what happens here is we may deliver the 185 the 190 the 164 the 153 and the 121 becomes the last stop for that day so that means mr 168 187 and mr 217 may have to wait until monday which may be just a little bit too late. So let's take a look on how we did. So we delivered 5,128 gallons to those 29 stops. So the 29 divided by eight is 3.6 deliveries per hour. Okay, 5,128 divided by 29, 176.8 gallons per stop. Budget was 30 stops, 185 gallons. Did you have time if all the stops were at your budgeted volume? Of course, the driver was at the tank, actual pumping time, 70 gallon per minute. That would have been 140 gallons, two minutes, 160, two minutes, 30 seconds, and 200 gallons, two minutes and 54 seconds. Well, you're in business to make a profit. Well, delivery efficiently directly impacts the bottom line. And I know what you're gonna say. We always did it this way. Well, times and technology are really changing. Remember in the very beginning, we talked about, you know, all those, all those conditions that we have to think about today, you know, and being home more, things like that. So what can you do to manage to improve the bottom line? Well, how about start by increasing your volume per delivery. Sorry about that, it's got... So, did you retire that truck to improve? Of course you did. So, let's take a look at the return. Before, O. Henry there, 60 gallon per minute max delivery. 25 average deliveries per day, 180 gallons per drop. So we take the, the stops, the drops, 25 times 180, 4,500 gallons. Divide that by our eight, 562.5 gallons divided by 60. And we end up with 9.4 gallons per minute. So now we have a 80 gallon per minute max delivery, 30 average deliveries per day, 180 gallons per drop. We now 5,400 gallons divided by eight, 675, divide that by 60, 11.25. That is a gain of 1.85 gallons per hour. Well, it looks like we should have just kept driving Mr. Old Henry there, the old Studebaker. So that leads us right into connective tank gauges and the future of fuel level monitoring. Changes in the home and the heating industry have been and are coming fast. So keeping your customers tanks has really become more of a challenge. We talked about alternate heating sources and changes in lifestyle, especially now, and the other factors that make traditional fuel use calculations unreliable and even obsolete today. So electronic fuel tank monitoring systems allow dealers to give their customer better service and peace of mind. You know, our customers want to know that their, their tanks are being filled on time as expected. And you know, so with these connective tank gauge, you can monitor against low levels and runouts. Right there, once again, when we talk about customer service, when I look at those three bullet points there as well, that's what customer service is all about. So, the Beckett Link Connected Tank Gauge, that's the solution that can give the, deleter, the dealer this opportunity while reducing those delivery costs. 
maximizing delivery gallons can reduce the number of deliveries and the resulting cost savings can more than pay for that investment in this type of technology. Remember what we said earlier? Fuel oil drives 70% of your cost. And we talked about some of those costs. And one of the things that we discussed was to make those deliveries closer to optimum. And that's what we're looking at doing here for you. So by adding the IoT technology and changing the way we're doing business, we can be more productive and more efficient. We can create better customer experience by improving your bottom line. You can control your delivery expenses seamlessly by improving your productivity. So what you can do to improve that productivity, this allows you to stay connected with all your customers. You can check tank levels, you can monitor remotely, you can set refill alerts, helps you plan more efficient routes and streamline all those deliveries. Remember what we said, we're in business to make a profit and we wanna make sure that we have a good return on that investment. Let's take a look at the connective tank gauge system. It's a very simple concept with four main components. And the first thing you have here itself is the actual sensor or the tank gauge. Okay, the gauge itself, it's very accurate, very reliable, that helps with the fuel delivery. It's very simple to install and it can measure liquid fuel levels up to 72 inches. Now you can see the tank gauge itself is mounted to this multifunctional two inch NPT threaded adapter. And there are other adapters available and this multifunctional adapter can screw into a, a top of a two inch metal tank or drop into the Euro style tank. And you'll see that, that coming up. The tank sensor gauge itself utilizes a very common CR123 battery that can be purchased just about anywhere. And the CR123 battery has a life expectancy of around 10 years. And because the, the path of the gauge communicating with the Beckett Link hub is a Bluetooth signal, one of the things you don't have to worry about is running you know that battery dry if you lose a wi-fi signal as some connective devices some wi-fi devices go into a searching or a roaming mode and that's what really kicks and drains the batteries the second item as one of the four major components is the beckett link app my technician powered by beckett monitors your fuel levels and that allows the customers to you know track their fuel usage customers can set and get alerts they can receive the alerts that it's time for a refill they can receive freeze alerts something i'll talk about when we talk about the the hub we can get alerts on the hub connection was lost we can share the data. You can view history usage. We can take a look at the installation data. We can get warranty information all from the Beckett Link app. The third device is the Beckett Link hub. Well, the hub provides the cloud connection. And with that cloud connection, that allows you to monitor your fuel levels anywhere using the web or the my technician mobile app so you know maybe the customer house is in connecticut and the customer in the winter is enjoying some time in florida they may have a concern they may be able to look at their app and they would know what their percentage of fuel is doing back in connecticut so that's the hub 
The fourth item is the dealer dashboard. All right, the dealer dashboard, that's the web-based program. And that allows all registered oil dealers and HVAC contractors to combine all their customer gauges. All right, so when they combine all their customers gauges, they can access that information anywhere, anytime. They are able to share that information among their dealer personnel. So they can monitor tank levels, monitor alerts, and help eliminate some of those inefficient route. Okay, with the dealer dashboard, there are sorting and different types of filters. So maybe you wanna filter by fuel oil percentage, and maybe you wanna sort by zip code. All this can help with those delivery routes. So now we'd like to take a look at the actual system architecture itself. Okay, you got the gauge itself and through the Bluetooth communication, sends the information to the hub. Okay, the hub takes that information through a Wi-Fi access point, stores the information to the cloud. So now the mobile application through the My Technician Beckett app can be accessed from a smartphone, a tablet, or that information can be pulled from the cloud from the web-based oil dealer application. Very quick, simple, and easy. Everything you need is in one package. The tank gauge itself, you get the cover along with the base. One of the things I want to mention here that inside that cover is glued to the side is a desiccant pack. That needs to remain inside. You have a printed circuit board here and that desiccant pack keeps the moisture out. So make sure you keep that in. You have the lithium CR123 battery, that multi-functional metal tank adapter that I talked about. You got the cover gasket, the adapter gasket, and the Euro tank gasket to be used on the Euro style tanks. The Beckett link hub along with the power supply and both the gauge and the hub come with their individual quick start guides. And very simple and easy to install. We remove the hub and the power adapter. Simply plug that into a very convenient 120 volt outlet. And you will notice that the hub starts to go through a bit of a startup sequence and you'll see the four lights start to flash as it starts to communicate. Now you wanna locate the hub indoors in a conditioned space, greater than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of that Bluetooth signal, we have a very wide range of 150 feet away. But we want that hub installed somewhere where it has that strong Wi-Fi signal. The next is the My Technician powered by Beckett app. Well, now you want to have your customer download that app to their smartphone or tablet. And while they're doing so, you can continue the installation of the tank gauge and the hub. Some security goes along with this because then the customer does not have to share their Wi-Fi password. So while they're doing that, you could be finishing the installation of the hub, going outside and you're installing the tank gauge. So if we have a above ground metal two inch tank, we are going to apply the pipe thread sealant, tighten that down, if we have the Euro style tank, we're gonna make sure the gasket is in place and we're gonna tighten down the retaining ring. We wanna make sure that when you're installing the gauge that you do use both gaskets. You have the cover gasket and you have the adapter gasket. And when you're mounting the gauge to the metal adapter, those screws are stainless steel. So you don't have to worry about those things rusting, breaking off, moisture getting in as well. And I said to complete the setup here, we have 
two quick start guards, one for the gauge and one for the hub. And it starts here with getting started, installing the gauge, comes down through here and you complete the installation. To expedite that, you can enter the network ID or you can scan the QR code. And it's right there at the bottom of the quick start guides. And then my technician applications. Once you set up the dealer share, the tank level and location will sync with the dealer dashboard. And then you're able to use filters and alerts to help gather that delivery information. So you can set your filters, collect for the account deliveries and establish the routes. The mapping program shows delivery locations just to help while establishing those different routes. So pretty much in a nutshell, kind of what we're saying here is we can help take the gamble out of those deliveries. So stop the game of chance. 125, 226, 290, 193. Remember those routes that we talked about? So okay, so we can help take the gamble out of those deliveries. So with the connective tape gauge system, we can start optimizing those deliveries. You'll be happy, customers will be happy, and old Mr. Neptune himself will be happy. So with that, I would also like to mention here to stay tuned. You've just been introduced to a very powerful tool for your company and you for your customers. We talked about that hub, so I will mention here, watch for new connected products from Beckett that will help you improve your customer's experience and add value to their home as your customer that will monitor other critical parts of their home environment. Give your customer a reason to stay with you. So more information is available on the connected tank gauge system simply by visiting BeckettCorp.com. And one of the things I would like to mention, if you have a lot of questions, we do have some really good FAQs on the website, but today you can sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with any one of our connected tank gauge team, team members there. You can contact us with any type of questions to techquestions at beckettcorp.com. And we also have a dedicated technical call center. If you tuned in for any one of our webinars this morning, we had the 800 oil burn, 6452876. Well, you can see here for the connective tank gauge, that dial-in number is 833. 473 2004. So that is a dedicated technical call center for any questions you have on connective paint gauge. And please don't forget, enjoy the show the entire month of August and visit the Beckett virtual booth to get more information. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Danny. Um, okay, everyone. Uh, Jeff mentioned the free one-on-one -on -one consultation uh, regarding the Beckett Link Connected Tank Gauge System. I've just put the link to sign up for that uh, in the chat panel on your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you're interested in signing up for that, please feel free to do so. Um, it's completely free and uh, we will schedule it around your availability as well. Um, additionally, in the handouts section of the GoToWebinar control panel, we posted a PDF of the presentation that Jeff just went through. Uh, so be sure to download that uh, before, um, before we leave. Um, and at this point, I'd like to open it up for any questions that anyone might have. Um, and uh, there was a couple that came through um, during the presentation, but uh, please uh, 
All you need to do is either send a question through on the questions panel, on the GoToWebinar control panel, or uh, you can raise your hand and I will unmute you so that you can uh, ask your question directly. Um, so Jeff, uh, let's start with the questions that came through um, during the session. <clears throat> let's see, the first one, should I put the hub closer to the router or closer to the gauge itself if I have an, if I have an inside tank installation? Okay, placement of the hub closer to the router or to the gauge. Oh, okay. Well, remember I, I mentioned that the hub and the gauge have a very long range of 150 feet. Okay. But first, one of the key features for the hub itself is you want to install the hub where you do have a strong Wi-Fi signal and you definitely have the hub stored somewhere in a really good condition space, okay? And I'm a perfect example of this because I have, you know, my tank is, is indoors with my basement, okay? So my, my gauge is installed down the basement and I actually have the hub upstairs near the router, okay? Well, my basement, you know, it stays pretty cool in the summer, but can also get really cold in the winter, all right? And I want the hub installed where the temperature will not get below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Now, you know, where I have my router is really close to, to my TV. I have a TV stand and I have a, a, a vestibule in a cabinet. My router actually sits inside that cabinet vestibule. And you stick your hand in there, you reach in, you generate a lot of heat. So you really don't want to put the hub inside that same area. Because one of the, the key features also of the hub, one of the alerts that we can signal is the hub can provide freeze alerts. So you want to make sure that it's in a strong Wi-Fi signal first of all, and it's in a, in a conditioned space. And that's the way it's gonna work best. And I've taken my hub and I moved it from a couple different rooms. You know, like I said, my tank's down the basement. I moved my hub from the living room to a back room, to a kitchen, you know, plugged it back in and had no problems whatsoever. So I hope that answered that question. All right, uh, see the next one that came through, uh, I think most of these guys have cut out, uh, Jeff, but we'll, uh, we'll make sure we address them for uh, everyone as well. Um, the next one is, can the hub give information that would warn of a possible freeze up with like you just addressed? Which, uh, yeah, and I just mentioned that, and to follow up on that, so yes, it can. What you actually get is a low temperature freeze alert. You know, so you would get an email and what you can do when you're programming and you're setting up the hub, there's an area in the app that you're gonna set that temperature and it has a range between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and this is one of the features that, that I really like. Okay, because with that freeze alert, it can let you know if the heating system may be down and needs service. You know, sometimes you may get a service company out there that they don't deliver the oil, they just service. So they're asking, you know, why might I need the dealer dashboard? What can the dealer dashboard right now do for me if you don't have the other connected products, you know, readily available? I know eventually we're gonna have other items that's gonna connect with the hub and that's the direction the technology is taking us. Sure, but right now, you can actually take a look at, and if you get a freeze alert for a customer, say, hey, the Jones is over in Mount Vernon. Uh, I got a freeze alert from them this morning. Oh, well, you know that they're, they're gone for a while. Uh, we service the house. They may not even know that, but with that freeze alert, there could be a reason that the system is off on safety. So that's the advantage. So yes, you would definitely get a low temperature freeze alert email. All right. 
A uh, couple more that came through, Jeff. Let's try to get to these before we cut okay. out. Okay. Um, what type of signal does this gauge use, and what fuel can this gauge be used on? Okay. Well, first of all, the Beckett Link tank gauge, that uses an ultrasonic signal that measures the fluid levels. And what it's designed for to be used on is your combustible liquids like number two, heating oil, the fuel oil, kerosene, whether it's biofuel, renewable diesel. It cannot be used with flammable liquids such as gasoline or liquid propane. You know, those have different criteria and it does not meet, I think it's the UL180C code. So it cannot be used on gasoline or liquid propane. And that, that's one of the questions that has come up before and about liquid propane. Um, that may be a future possibility for us. So, you know, keep your eyes and ears open. Okay. I'm not quite sure how this one is phrased, but I'll do my best. Um, if the battery starts to get low, how and will I get notified? I think maybe maybe it was supposed to intend, intended to say, how will I get notified? Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, you will you will get notified. Now, when, you, when you're setting that up and you look at your system on that Beckett Link app, and you actually have a little icon with, with a battery, and under normal conditions, it's always gonna read the word okay. Okay, you install the battery, it might, you know, it's gonna load and everything, and what's gonna happen is over, over time, remember I talked about that CR123 battery? Well, we're talking, you know, very close to 10 years as, as a lifespan. When that battery drops to about 30%, you will get a low battery email alert. So you will get notified and it will be via email. All right. So those are the questions that came through. Are there any other questions from the audience uh, before we adjourn for the day? Looks like, uh, looks like you answered everything, Jeff. Um, so again, everyone, I'd like to thank you for participating in today's session. Um, again, uh, take a look at the chat window on your GoToWebinar control panel for a couple of the links, both for the other training sessions, which are available. Uh, there's one live one next Thursday, and then the other ones are available on demand, uh, the ones from earlier this morning, and also the link for the free one-on-one -on -one consultation um, that is also in the GoToWebinar uh, control panel in the uh, in the chat section. Um, we'll also send all of this stuff to you via email as well. And please don't forget to download the uh, the PDF of the presentation of today's presentation as well. Also available on the go to our control panel. Um, and again, thank you so much for participating and for joining us today. We hope to see you at a future Beckett online training session. And um, good uh, good luck to you all. And have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Bye bye.